This class will deal with the Meyer-Briggs type indicator. What we're going to deal with in this class is looking at ways of classifying individuals according to their personality types. And this is quite a famous way of approaching it. It's well established in the management literature and it's important we understand the logic of, of how this process uh, is worked out. So let's work our way through the, the Meyer-Briggs type indicator to see how it attempts to classify individuals. Meyer-Briggs type indicator uh, MBTI is widely used as a personality test so it's a way of testing for different uh, personality types. It was first developed by Carl Jung, a psychiatrist who specialized in personality archetypes. In other words, broad categories of, of individuals who fitted into certain types could, could be classified together according to certain characteristics. His work was further developed by Catherine Briggs and her daughter, Isabel Briggs Meyer. Jung's theory now has four pairs of opposing psychological elements. And we'll see how, how these work in a few moments. But essentially, how this has worked out is that Jung came up with various personality types. Um, so people may be one type of uh, personality or a different type of personality and so on. And what Briggs and Meyer did was to classify these and work out their characteristics so that uh, people may be classified according to their their personality. As I said, it'll, it'll become clearer as we work our way through it. The theory suggests that one element in each pair is more dominant than the other and is labelled as the individual's preferred approach. So we have different types of personality. Some people are quiet, some people are more outgoing, some people are studious and like to, to study and other people just want to get the bare facts. There are, there are different types of people and by looking at the classifications worked out by Jung and organizing them and looking at their essential characteristics uh, Briggs and Meyer were able to work out a, a typology, a way of using this perhaps in practice. Now their type indicator, well it's commonly used in organizations in order to determine different personality types amongst staff. Particularly in large organizations where uh, people work in teams, it's important that the teams are reasonably homogeneous. In other words, they fit together. Their personalities suit each other. And they, they work better as a consequence. Putting someone else into the team may be disruptive. A different personality type may be disruptive. So it's important in organizations to try and match people, to fit them in so that they, they work together they work together well and they're productive and they're happy. They're happy to work together, to be to associate with each other because they are similar. The assumption is that knowing individual person personality types allows better communications between individuals and helps teams to work harmoniously. So it's it's attempting to resolve issues before they arrive, before they, before they happen. So it's attempting to solve the problem before it happens. It's, it's trying to get people who are similar and put them together. So there's no disruption, no arguments, no disputes. There's no clashes of personality. The people are relatively the same. Understanding personality types can help individuals understand each other, which in turn forms better relationships, and similar personalities can be grouped together to encourage effective team working. So it's, it's a function of the HRM section or department 
to to try and ensure that teams work together and that people are able to to work together that their personalities do not grate and they don't upset each other and they don't have personality traits that annoy each other so it's it's attempting to get a harmonious working environment so it's trying to match people together now the the purpose of the myers briggs uh briggs uh type indicator well it's been used in a variety of settings including education training and also for the following purposes to meet the needs of different individual personality types it's simply nice for people to mix with similar people whether they're mixing with people who are different radically different have different opinions and uh, have different personalities are uh, structured differently it can lead to upset it can lead to conflict and it can lead to uh, bad relationships so people like to mix with similar people and also looking at the motivations to learn trying to find people who match the organization if the organization is a learning organization in the sense that <coughs> technology is changing fairly fast and people need to keep abreast of what's happening and be up to date with the latest thinking in the area they need to have motivation to learn it's important to get the personality type that is amenable to to learning is wants to learn they are motivated to learn so it's important to get the personality type to suit the situation implement implementation of different teaching and learning strategies um, if a tutor knows that a group of people who perhaps are very similar but they are they're very extrovert in the sense that they they want to challenge and talk and uh, they're they're very outspoken about their feelings and about the way they think about a topic and if a tutor knows this about a group then the tutor can design a teaching and learning strategy to suit that often in teaching situations the problem the tutor has is that the groups are very heterogeneous some people like to talk and question and probe and make points and make interruptions and other people sit quietly don't want to say anything just want to make notes and sit in the corner there are different personality types now, the tutor must design a teaching and learning strategy to try and accommodate the group well if if the tutor knows that the group is of a particular type they're they're all very outspoken and all very lively and then the tutor can design uh, a better course with that in mind Now there are scales that uh, the uh, Myers-Briggs type indicator uses. There are four scales. The characteristics of each are as follows. First of all we have extrovert and introvert. And as I said earlier, these are broadly based on the work of Carl Jung. But extrovert and introvert. We have <coughs> sensing and intuition. People sometimes are sensing people they, they feel things they they get a, a sense for what's happening they got a feeling for what's happening um, or they might want to use their senses in in a in a more tactile way they want to use touch or sight or sound and pick up information that way or they might want to just feel what's happening think about what's happening and more intuitive we'll see how how this works in a few moments you also have people who are thinking and others who are feeling people who think about situations and other people just go with their feelings what do they feel about the situation and we also have judging and perceiving now we'll talk about each of these over the next few slides just to see what each of them means and we're going to work through it as it's on the slide here at the moment 
uh, first of all extrovert, introvert and then sensing intuition and so on. So let's start with the uh, extrovert, introvert. So an extrovert, an extrovert is focused on the outer world, the external environment. A person who is extrovert uh, looks outwards, looking looking out to the world, not looking into him or herself, not looking into their motivations or their feelings or they're not concerned they're looking outwards, they're extrovert. They are they want to participate in the environment and they, they want to understand the environment in which they work and live and they want to they're, they're moving out of themselves. They are extrovert. They are outside in the outside environment. They're interested in events and people and they're looking at events related to the external environment. They're, they're looking outwards. They're looking to the events that's around them, what's happening, and they're curious and they want to be involved and they want to make suggestions and recommendations and get involved. They, they, they want to, to deal with the situation and they want to deal with people. So they are outward looking. They're able to share their feelings. Uh, they learn best by talking to others and tend to work well in groups. They, extroverts can share their feelings. They're, they're not hiding anything. They're not uh, secretive or, or concealing their, their true uh, intentions perhaps. They're, they're more outward. They, they, are, they can talk about their feelings. They can talk about the situation. Um, and they, they want to talk to others and they want to work in a group. They, they tend to be more leader type people. They, they're into leadership and they're into uh, channeling the efforts of the group and organizing the group and participating. So they're much, they're very active people. Now by contrast introverts well, introverts are focused on the inner world. They are motivated by their internal perception and judgment about concepts and ideas. Introverts are looking in, looking into themselves and looking at how, uh, how, how the world is structured and looking at concepts and ideas and analyzing and thinking about situations, not not perhaps uh, discussing them openly, thinking about them themselves, uh, looking at a situation and going away and sitting solitary uh, somewhere and thinking about what's happened. So much more internal, internal to the mind of that person. They develop their creativity from within. They like to reflect and self-examine and self-discover they think of situations and they reflect on it and what did they learn from it. But they do it themselves. They, they are looking into themselves and doing the analysis based on what they think is within them. They prefer to work alone. They develop their ideas by private thinking. They learn by watching others, others and prefer to keep personal matters and emotions to themselves. They don't like to share their emotions. They don't like to talk about personal things. Uh, they watch others, they learn, and they, they think about what they've seen. And they're capable of working, but they don't want to be too involved with others or too involved with the situation. They are introvert. They are within themselves. Quiet people, working doing their job but doing it in a non-collaborative uh, form. They, they prefer to be on their own. Now the next set of uh, types that we talked about earlier was sensing and intuition. Well, sensing, this stage was developed to examine an individual's way of perceiving. How does the individual perceive something? How does a, an individual get a fix on something? How do they understand something? And, and how the, does the individual uh, interpret the information or interpret the data and turn it into information? 
So in this case, it's how does the does the individual see or perceive something? What's the the mechanism? How do you perceive a situation? And this view is that sensing may be used. Sensing may be used to perceive a situation. We would use the facts. And we have five senses. Sight, hearing, touch, taste and smell. We have these five senses and we can use the five senses to pick up data which we can process into information in our heads. We, we analyze the data, we understand the data, it becomes information to us and we can act on, on the information. So this is a way of picking up um, situations. We, we pick up the data and we can pick it up through our senses. So we are sensing people. And we make informed judgments and decisions about the environment based on the information we've picked up through our senses. Individuals who are sensing like to analyze real life examples. They're, they're very practical. They're using their senses. They're looking at the environment. They're looking at situations in the environment. And they're, they're, they're acquiring data about it through their senses and then they're thinking about the data, turning it into information, and they like practical problems and practical situations where they can use their senses. The sight, hearing, touch, taste and smell. They, they like to use these and to pick up on the information from the senses and then analyze it. So that's the sensing person. and. The last one in this section is intuition. Now intuition is based on an individual's instincts. Intuition relies on meanings and emotions that are beyond the conscious mind. So intuition is, is when a person has a feeling for something, thinks that something's about to happen or uh, feels that a situation is not right, there's something wrong, or feels that a situation is right, it's it's intuitive. It's intuition. It's, it's something inside the person. They are not thinking about it. It's not based on facts. It's based on a feeling, an understanding of the situation. They make decisions based on feelings and on imagination and on creativity. They, they use their imagination and they're using these these deeper types of processes. But it's and, and their feelings may not be based on fact. Their, their feelings may be based on what they think may happen given the situation that they find themselves in or given the situation they're considering. So it's it's a feeling. It's it's not fully articulated. It's not based necessarily on the facts. It's what they think might happen. They're able to see the bigger picture when making decisions. They don't rely on the facts too much, as I said. They, they take whatever facts that are obvious, but, but really their emphasis is on imagining what could happen and trying to get an understanding of the situation from their their feelings their uh, their approach their internal approach their their thinkings th their thinking that is deep within their their mind within their perhaps their subconscious almost they they're, they're pulling out uh feelings that perhaps link to incidents in the past or uh or looking at their imagination which will indicate which might indicate to them, I should say, uh, what may or may not happen. So they're not relying on the facts. Then we have um, thinking and feeling type people. Uh, the thinking people, um, this stage relates to an individual's preferences in decision making. 
Um, different people use different methods of judgment which include either thinking or feeling. When we have to make a decision, uh, perhaps a commercial decision about a business, about a piece of investment or about some change in the product or whatever it is, when we have to make a decision, do we use facts? Do we analyze the situation or do we base it on our feelings? Uh, how do we go about making the decision? And thinking is the approach that I suppose most business people would recommend. They think about the situation. They take whatever facts there are. They take whatever research has been conducted in the area. They try to get insights before they make the decision. So it's not based on their feelings. Having said that, there are many situations in business where feelings do come into play, where the future is unknown. We, we can't tell what the future is. The future is, is, uh, is a situation that is not necessarily predictable. And therefore, we have to use our feelings. And the basis, for example, of entrepreneurship is based on feelings. People, people imagine situations and try to develop the situations into commercial products and into commercial organizations. So to start with a feeling about a situation, a gap in the market, a niche, and try to fill it. So feelings do play a part in decision making, but the thinking person will predominantly try to base it on facts and on analysis. So they they rely on logic and objective criteria wherever possible. They try to pick up facts and figures and base their decisions on facts and figures. And they, they like to try and think through different scenarios. What is likely to happen? What, what may happen? What could happen but it's improbable that it will happen. But at the same time it could happen. So looking at different scenarios may be a situation where the thinking person uh, approaches uh, the situation. The thinking person takes on the situation by looking at the facts, looking at different scenarios, looking at very optimistic scenarios, very pessimistic scenarios, and tries to work out what is the best course of action. They like debating and questioning in order to acquire more knowledge. The thinking person is always trying to acquire information. They're trying to perform analysis and add to their stock of understanding, the stock of experiences which they can draw on in the future. They want to be more efficient and better at decision making, so they want to have a wide variety of experiences. So they're constantly debating with others and questioning others and trying to pick up the essence of situations so that it's a, in a sense they can be almost filed away in the individual's head and when needed in the future can be drawn out and compared to situations which will help the decision making process. Now the, the feeling side of this, well in terms of feelings decisions are made based on personal and social values. So with feelings it depends on the type of person that's making the decision. Uh, with feelings it's not so much the data or the research or the hard facts, it's the feelings that the person has. Is the person an optimist or a pessimist? Is the person uh, willing to take risks? What does the person think about the uncertainty of the world? And uh, So it's a reflection really of the individual personality type. Feeling type people tend to use their values and traditions in making decisions. People from different cultures might have a different approach to decision making. Some may be very entrepreneurial, some may not be entrepreneurial at all and don't understand entrepreneurship. So some may be very enthusiastic in terms of entrepreneurship. And we've just got to look at some areas in the world. Uh, Silicon Valley in California. Why is it 
there is such a uh, an overwhelming dominance of the area by high tech companies. Um, the whole the name of the place, Silicon Valley. Why, what's in the culture? What what attracts people to to be there? So it looks at their traditions and their values, and they have a feeling if they're if if they're mixing with similar types, they're sparking off each other. They're they're able to have better communications, better networking. They have a feeling that they're they're going to succeed. The the individuals prefer harmony. They like to come to an agreed conclusion and prefer helping others. Uh, feeling people are. Uh, harmonious people. They 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 like to have issues resolved. They don't like conflict. They they like to take a situation and then conclude the situation. So it's it's finished. So they they're able to bring forward uh, a proposal. They've they have a feeling about the proposal whether it's going to be good or bad, and they're able to communicate this to others and preferably people with the same values as themselves and bring the whole situation to a conclusion. Now, um, judging and perceiving. This stage looks at how individuals deal with the world. Individuals use different process uh, in order to understand their surroundings and make perceptions of the world in which they live. So, uh, individuals don't approach situations from the same angle. People look at situations differently. And we're looking at how individuals deal with the world. How do individuals um, understand the world in which they live? How do they perceive the world? How do they understand it? And how do they make uh, decisions about situations which are good or bad? What makes them good and what makes them bad? What makes them desirable or not desirable? And how do the individuals perceive the situation in the first place that leads them to, to the conclusion that something is good or bad? So it's looking at the judging and perception. Now, let's take judging for a start. Um, individuals who tend towards judging use a process which is either thinking or feeling. They use this in order to deal with the outside world. So, if we're judging, then we're, we're thinking about situation. We're, we're, we're judging a situation, so we must be thinking about it. And we may be thinking about it using facts and figures and observations and research. Or we may have a feeling about the situation. We haven't got the facts and the figures or the research. We just have a feeling that this is good or that's going to work. or well, That feeling may be a reflection of our personality type, which is we are optimists or we are pessimists or we have a particular uh, stance, mental stance which colours the way we see a situation. So we judge by either thinking or feeling. We have um, one of those approaches helps us to judge situations. Now these individuals abide by rules. They are they have a clear structure to follow. So they like to plan ahead and they like to be organised they're judging situations, so they try to be methodical, they try to be organized, they try to light up all the pluses and all the minuses together, and they try to weigh which one is best, they're trying to make a decision, they're judging. So they like to have a clear structure, they don't like to have vagueness, where a situation could be good or bad. They prefer to say, well, this is good, and that's that's bad, and this is good also, and so on. And it's like having a checklist of debits and credits, which one predominates, which way will the decision go. 
On the perceiving side, well, individuals who learn, or sorry, who lean towards perception tend to use either sensing or intuition. So that's how we perceive. Uh, we perceive the world by our senses, by looking at situations or hearing what's going on or touching, tasting. It depends on what, what activity we're engaged in. If we're a chef, tasting I suppose and smell and so on would be very important, as would sight. But it depends. We, we look at uh, situations and we try to perceive them. We, we understand the situation that, that is confronting us and we understand it through our senses. But we may not. We may uh, use that if we're that type of person. Another type of person may use intuition, may have a feeling about a situation and don't like it. It doesn't matter what the, the observations are telling the person or what the senses are telling the person, they don't like it. They, their intuition has gone against it. They just have a bad feeling and they don't like it. So this is the, the second part of perceiving. So we use sensing and intuition to make our perceptions. People who uh, use perceiving this way have a very relaxed approach. They're flexible, which means they can adapt easily to changing situations, and they like to explore situations. They like perceiving, they like finding out, they like looking at situations and trying to work out what the situation is telling us. In business, for example, um, the marketing section might want to change the design of uh, some marketing campaign. They, they have an approach that uh, is based on perhaps on feedback from customers and uh, they're, they're observing customer reaction to the product. And, but they also have a feeling. They have a feeling that if they do ch make a change, it'll be good. Or if they change it in this way, it'll be bad. They, so they're, they've got a relaxed approach in the sense that they're, they're trying to balance the two situations and they're trying to see what is happening and what's the effects of their actions in the marketplace. Now, determining personality types. Well, way back we, we listed out the, the different types. Extrovert, introvert, sensing, intuition, thinking, feeling, judging and perceiving. So we have these four broad categories. and. They really are opposites, extrovert, introvert, sensing, intuition. So we're dealing here with contrasting approaches. So there are 16 possible combinations. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So we have 16 ways in which these situations could arise. So we could have somebody who's extrovert and intuitive and thinking and judging. Or we could have someone who's extrovert, intuitive, feeling, and perceiving. So we can mix it up. We have 16 possibilities here. And so we can save writing it all out every time. Uh, be a lot to write out for each box. They're just simply labelled as E, I, E for extrovert, I for introvert, S for sensing, and the I has been used up for introvert, so we can't have I again, so we have N, N for intuition. Then we have T and F for thinking and feeling, and J and P for judging and perceiving. So we have, we have letters to represent each of these. Now, different individuals have different personalities, and the Meyer-Briggs type indicator helps determine, to determine these different personality types. So that's what it's attempting to do. It's try, attempting to look at our personality types. Uh, are we perceiving, judging, intuitive, or what are we? So we're, we're going to use that structure to try and uh, classify people. So the personality types are determined by a code with four letters, and there are 16 types. Each code 
determines a personality type. So a personality type is made up from four letters. And there are 16 possible types of person. According to this approach, individuals can be classified in 16 different ways. Now, there are the 16 possibilities. Um, so S and N, uh, sensing and intuitive, E and I, extrovert and introvert and so on. And we look at the, the, po the different possible ways that these can be mixed up. So there are 16 of them. Now if we take uh, if we take this and we take let's say an example we, we let's say we find somebody and, and having observed the person and conducted some tests and talked to the person and uh, got got some feeling for that type of person we discovered that the person was ISTJ introvert sensing thinking and judging let's say we we found out somebody was of that type then what does that mean well according to the Meyer Briggs indicator uh, an ISTJ is a serious person who's quiet uh, Ern's success is practical, realistic, and responsible. They're very organized and prefer to work with logic, to work with thinking, because they're a thinking person. The individuals value traditions and are very loyal. So, if we can determine someone is an ISTJ, then that's the type of person we would expect to find according to this view. Now each of these boxes will have a different set of characteristics associated with it. So an ISFJ will be different to what I've got on the screen at the moment. There will be a different uh, description. And for each one uh, there is a a description for each of the 16 types. Now I'm not going to go through all of the 16 and say oh for a, an ISFJ there's this description and for an ENFJ there's that description. Instead I would ask you to if you're really interested in this to do some research in the area and uh, perhaps <coughs> go online and do some research. There are quite a few websites who have these classifications worked out um, these are two that I've I've fallen across, but uh, <clears throat> I'm sure if uh, you perform a more extensive search of the internet or other sources, you'll find all of these boxes explained. I just picked out that one to show you how it works. So what we've got now is an explanation for personality types. If we know that somebody is introvert and we know someone is sensing I mean, and thinking and judging and then that's the sort of person we would expect and for a different box we'll expect a different sort. So now we're able to classify people which sounds quite amazing and it doesn't sound very complimentary to people that we can be classified in these 16 ways but that's what this approach is suggesting. Now the uses of the Meyer Briggs well if we can classify people as we've just suggested then it's possible to organize them into effective teams so it's easier to manage staff and it's also good for guiding careers we know the type of person they are so they can match careers with them and match work with them uh, so that they, they themselves feel happier in what they're doing. There's much better relationships at work because of better working in teams, similar people working together so there's improved relationships and the working environment is happier because people are matched 
more effectively. It's not just randomly putting people into place. This is putting people who can work together, who have similar personality types together. And of course, education and training can be developed more precisely because the personality types will be known to the trainer. And he'll know what type of group of people he's going to or she's going to teach on a particular situation or train on a particular situation. And uh, they're able to tailor their material and their approach to meet the, the type of person that's going to be in the group because they know the type of person that makes up that group. So uh, if the analysis is conducted and they know the type of Meyer Briggs uh, type that they're expecting, they can, as I said, tailor their, their courses accordingly. And of course, for coaching, monitoring and advising people, if, uh, if a coach knows the type of person that he or she is talking to, then it's easier to, again, tailor what's said and make more uh, relevant points and perhaps make more, uh, more positive suggestions about how to go forward and how to avoid situations and to what to look for. It could be in terms of career. Uh, what to look for in terms of career. What will match that person's personality most effectively. So the Myers-Briggs type indicator is it's an interesting approach. It classifies people into 16 types uh, by p trying to pick up information which builds up a picture and, and eventually places people within one of the 16 boxes then that type of person, uh, their essential characteristics can be determined. And if for a large group, if, if it was done for everyone, then effective groups, it's argued, could be creative, create effective teams or effective departments, departments that work well together because they're all very similar personality. And that's the idea behind it. And that's also all I'm going to do on this uh, topic, so I'm going to leave it at that and say thank you for watching.